Welcome to my brief mathography. Here's a little information about my math experiences in my lifetime. My experiences inform how I engage with math and how I teach. I look forward to your mathographies so that I can get a better understanding of your experiences, needs, and goals. I have provided an image of a pencil box from when I was a kid. Um, I have always loved anything that helps with computations, and these pencil, box had a pencil boxes had a slider on them that would show the multiplication tables. I have provided some notes that I jotted down while considering my own math experiences for my mathography. Um, I have lots of boxes of these. Some of these are going to appear later. I would just share a couple things with you right now. Most of my instructors in college were older white males. I didn't have a lot of diversity in my um, collection of instructors. Um, graduate school, I went to graduate school at Western Michigan University. It was not a great fit there, but I finished. I, I now know that I would have appreciated a little bit different um, situation there. I followed some easy professors around for a while until I figured out how that plan backfires. So I think I should have followed some folks around who challenged me more. One of these boxes in my notes shows a problem that I got wrong as a kid, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. But it was an early indicator that teachers thought at that time that engaging in math meant following instructions or doing whatever the teacher saw to do. And I don't think that about math teaching and learning, but that's what my experience was as a younger person. Um, I was often told this uh, you know, I'm pretty good at math for a girl. That was something I was told as a young person. This pretty good for a girl business was a theme through my K-12 experience, and it was usually accompanied by a laugh, like that was some kind of joke. I am confident in my mathematical abilities, but I'm still developing strategies to use in new situations. I enjoy participating in Mental Math Monday on the platform formerly known as Twitter. It is interesting for me to compare my solutions to others and I get to learn stuff. When I took math courses as a younger person, I thought success in math meant being fast at computations or fast to pick up new solution techniques. I view success in math differently now and I know that other qualities are actually valued in mathematics. Here I've provided an image from uh, Howie I think is how you pronounce his last name. Um, I follow him on Twitter or whatever it's called now, and he does some mental math Monday problems. I like his work a lot. As a student outside of math classes, I learned about mathematical thinking and strategies through things like playing cards and other kinds of games, through cooking and baking, shopping for the best deal, household projects like landscaping or construction, hobbies like knitting. I provided an image from an old knitting pattern of my mom's from the 1950s, and it's a diagram in the instructions. So it's kind of like a grid with different, um, different symbols in each little square that you're supposed to follow as you knit along. Uh, my mom's an avid knitter. Patterns like these are like codes, if you ask me, like coding. I had many positive supportive experiences in math classes once I got to college. However, an early elementary school interaction went something like this. Um, count the dots in the image shown. And the image had two dots arranged horizontally, and underneath that there was one dot, and then two dots horizontally, and then one dot underneath, two dots horizontally, and then one dot underneath, followed by two dots horizontally. And the instructions were count the dots. I got the wrong answer, but nobody cared why it was wrong. In other words, they didn't ask how I got my answer. The teacher just kept repeating, just count the dots. Had the teacher asked, I would have told them that I was envisioning dice when I was counting. This would have been an opportunity to learn about double counting. Instead, I learned that I was not supposed to think in alternate ways in math class in this case. Just so you know, I love it when students see things differently than I do. And in the image that I provided, I also leave a little note. Here's some more math. 
Inserting images in the screens here doesn't seem to preserve their original proportions, making them appear distorted. Hmm. There are a lot of things I've enjoyed about studying mathematics, including learning new ways of thinking and computing, realizing that mathematics opens doors to other opportunities like studying in other fields, and proving for certain that something is true or correct. All of these things have been very empowering for me. Some things that I have disliked when studying mathematics include feeling like I'm not good enough or fast enough compared to my peers, feeling like I've been left alone to figure things out on my own, and those feelings sometimes kept me from being my best mathematical self. Finally, I would say that my attitude about mathematics has stayed fairly consistent over time. I think mathematics, its concepts and its applications are absolutely beautiful. I think that everyone has the capacity to learn mathematics, including very high level mathematics. And I hope students will come to embrace mathematics and treat it as a doorway to opportunities. At this point, I don't wanna share my thoughts on what mathematics is all about. I am waiting to hear or read your responses about that, and then I'll get back to you about my thoughts.